All right, y'all. Back on the move, back on the move. Sorry for my ashy face. I just got finished freshening up. So I'm out here in New Hampshire. I'm telling everybody I'm in Vermont. <laughs> but I'm out here in New Hampshire. Um, I got one stop out here, then I'm gonna head back and I'm done. Um, actually, I should have been done last night and I should have been driving back home. But uh, coming up through New York, I had to deal with that Giants game. Um, and then, you know, the George Washington Bridge, that's like always a head. Well, not always, but Sunday, you had the Thanksgiving holiday, everybody leaving, you know. So that was pretty hectic. Not to mention they had all the exits blocked off. But um, other than that, bro, I'm doing good, man. I can actually say I'm actually happy. I'm coming up on my one month mark at this job. And, um, bro, I like it. I like it. I'm surprised, too. Like I told you off in the rip, I had a lot of options. And, um, you know, one thing about getting in the trucking, bro, your options are, like, very plentiful. And you might go from not having no options before you get in the trucking and you just scrambling trying to take any job to now you got dozens of options and you trying to make sure you pick the right one which is not a bad feeling to have. I take that problem over, you mean, scrambling for a job, anything. And one thing about when you trying to find the right trucking job, the main things you wanna look for, for me, at my age, where I'm at now in life, benefits, bro. I'm not taking no job, that's that's out of the question now. We're not doing no job with no benefits, that's dead at this point. They gotta have benefits, vision, dental, health, all that, that's number one. And then you got pay, and home time. Now, like I said in my last video, it's pretty much going to depend on you, what's more important. Some people would take that bag and say, all right, I'll be home a little less, but I'm making this amount of money. Some people, if you like me, I'm more so focused on home time. I could take a couple dollars short if my home life is, I mean, the way I want it to be. Or you can get lucky, like me, and you can get a sweet deal where the bag is up there and you still get home how you want to get home. So it's crazy, God working mysterious ways. And I seen a lot of comments under my video when I told everybody that I left prom. And he said, when one door closes, another one opens. And that could not be, it's true. It's true as hell. Because, bro, I did not plan on taking this job. Remember, I told you I was planning on going with FedEx. And this job kind of just fell in my lap. I wasn't really sure about it. Um, touching freight is not bad, bro. If you're trying to make some money out here, I ain't gonna say you gotta touch freight, and a lot of people don't wanna touch freight. And honestly, you don't have to touch freight to make decent money. But I know in my fields, it was either fuel hauling, and that's pretty much touching freight. You know, you gotta deal with all them hoses, so that's kinda like touching freight. Um, but this job right here is pulling pallets. Now, US Foods, they actually parked over there. I don't know if you can see them, they over there. That's a different type of touch freight. I'm not touching that type of freight, even though when I first came home, my first, first, first came home, I did apply for Cisco and US Foods. But luckily, as a blessing, bro, they turned me down. Cisco ain't even hired me. I went for the interview and everything. I'm swearing up and down like, oh, this is an easy job. I know I'm gonna get this joint. I'm cocky with it. And they ain't even hire me. But looking back on it, bro, that's a blessing. Because if I'd have went with Cisco, I'd have probably got on that job. I wouldn't have filled out no more applications and I'd have missed my blessing. So thank you, Cisco, for not hiring me and making my life easier. But um, what I was about to say is, Cisco, they do pay well. They pay great. But a lot of that money going to come from overtime. And of course, you slinging cases. You coming home with your back messed up every day. Whereas me, I'm touching freight. But I got an electric pilot jack. Sometimes I use the manual. Um, but bro, I'm just jacking it up and I'm pulling it off. Most of the stops are docks. If they don't have a dock, I'm just backing up and I'm using a lift gate, bringing it down. I'm willing it in. And that's it. So I'm not doing back breaking work by the end of my shift. I'm not tired. I'm not burnt out. Um, outside of the drive. Um, that's one difference I can say from when I was uh, at prime, at least on the tanker side, I was never running on my clock, bro. I probably drove like six hours, seven hours a day, and that was it, I'm shutting down. Whereas here, I'm running out my whole clock. Like every time I park, I'll be having like 20 minutes, 10, 15 minutes left on my drive clock, just my whole 14 hour clock. So that's new to me. But what I like about it is I get breaks in between. So it's not like I'm driving straight and then just stopping, that always kind of burnt me out. To whereas I'll drive, my first stop might be 
an hour, two hour. I think the most I ever had to drive to my first stop is like four hours. Do that one stop. Then my other stop is like an hour and a half. Drive an hour and a half, drop that. Then I might have another stop that's like an hour and a half, two hours, drop that. And then I start working my way back to uh, PA. Now obviously with my drive clock, I never make it all the way back home. Um, hence that's where, I mean, the regional aspect comes in because I got to sleep in the truck. But bro, yeah, I'm driving on my whole clock, but it never seemed like back breaking work. It never seemed like I'm killing myself because I'm pacing myself. I drive a little bit, then I get out, I stretch my legs, touching freight, drive a little bit, do the same thing. So don't be scared to touch freight. That's what I'm gonna say. Don't be scared to touch freight. Because a lot of truck drivers, we out here just driving day in and day out, drive, go to sleep, drive, go to sleep. And that's gonna be horrible in your body in 10 years. So at least if you get a little job where you're not back breaking, I mean, you're not slinging cases, but you're still touching freight, there's nothing wrong with that, bro. It make you feel like you're still human, not a robot just driving all day. That's one of the aspects I didn't really like about trucking, which is another reason why I took Tanker too, because I knew Tanker, I mean, they got out, they was a little more active than drive and reefer. They just drive all day, every day. That's dead. And, um, you know, flatbed, that's a little bit too much work. I wasn't really trying to do all that. Mainly in the cold. Like, it's getting cold now. It's probably like 40 degrees. It's not too crazy. But last night on my drive up here, I had to work in the rain. Um, pouring down, too. But, you know, I'm a grown-ass man. Rain ain't about to stop nothing over here. I ain't really tripping about no rain. I wore uh, bright clothing. I'll be good. But I can't imagine being out here. It's like 30 degrees, pouring down, raining. And I'm trying to tarp something. The wind blowing and all this goofy-ass shit. So that's why I never wanted to do flatbed. And... The money is not that different. Some people like it, though, so I don't know. But yeah, I just wanted to tap in with y'all. But I'm going to uh, work my way. I'm going to do this last stop. And when I pull over, I want to break down the pay, right? Because I, I got my second check, my second or third check. Um, and I just kind of want to crunch some numbers with y'all about, you know, what pay was like OTR versus how my pay is now being local slash regional. And it might surprise y'all. So I'm going to tap in with y'all when I get further down the route. Let y'all see. I done found my way to another uh, international. Ain't that soon? Huh. I found my way to another international. But uh, I don't know how much light I got here. I don't know what y'all can see it, but you know, it's pretty much it. Nothing major. Got my little bed. Ain't nothing up top. Like people be doing these truck tours. I don't be knowing what y'all trying to see. Like every truck look the same. I mean, I got the mini fridge. I mean, got my almond milk in there. A uh, little bit of storage space. like. Yeah, this ain't MTV Cribs or nothing. <laughs> but I know a couple people say, yo, let me show you, let me show, uh, show me your truck, show me your truck. I will say this is definitely a nicer uh, international than I'm used to. My other one, I think that was like a basic. That was like an LT. This drone, I mean, they got a little few trims. Everything else the same. Got the radio in the back, got the little light charger port. But uh, yeah, everything else is exactly the same. They ain't had no fan up there. I wish I had a fan when I was training with my trainer. That it came in handy. But um, yeah, you know, that's what it is. All right, y'all, so I'm not sure how they usually do it with the screen recording and then they, you know, talk as they doing it. I don't know how to do all that. So basically, I'm gonna probably just uh, put the pay somewhere up here on the screen and talk as I go. Um, so as y'all can see, that first week, um, pay was 1200 like 1265 I'm not looking at it as I'm doing the video, but I'll uh, edit it in. But the pay was like $1,265 or whatever. Um, so that pay included orientation. Um, they did an online pay orientation. That's number one, right? So that's unheard of to me. I know truckers that probably been in the game for a while. They probably heard of it. I'm pretty sure it's not new, but it's definitely new to me. Um, so I had to do a, a, a bunch of like JJ Keller videos, safety trainings. Obviously, I had to get my forklift certification. A lot of certifications, hazmat, stuff like that. Um, so it probably took maybe a week, not even a week. It took like a few days, um, to go through all those courses. Um, then I had to talk to, uh, the manager and all that, you know, all the onboarding process, but I was able to do everything at home. That's number one. And I got paid for that. So I'm talking about, I'm in the, I'm in the crib with, it, with my feet up on the laptop playing mad and then switching to JJ Keller and whatnot. So that was new to me. That was love. So that was a part of that check. And, um, that was training pay. I think I rolled with a trainer for uh three days i came in kind of in the middle of the week so i only caught like two three days uh two routes for that one pay period um so boom that's what that was not bad for one week um as you can see the next one 1700 that's when i was by myself um finally and um you see i ran the bag up i ran the bag up on that one um 
that 1700 what all came with that i'm gonna run it down to y'all right that came with doing five runs not even five runs right so that came working five days sunday went up to new york dropped that run sunday i drove back home monday right come back out tuesday make a run to massachusetts come back home wednesday now i do got to come right back in wednesday boom i took a run i did a run to virginia i did three stops in virginia i came back thursday i got back thursday afternoon it's like around three four o'clock and that was my week <laughs> and i made like damn near 800 1800 so now you can see why i'm a little happy about this job i'm not breaking my back and like i said i got home thursday afternoon so i had thursday just hypothetically say i had a full weekend ahead of me right so i got back thursday around three um say i wanted to go out with my folks yo we going out tonight it's a concert i could have went out to the concert thursday night friday night you know that's when everything started jumping in the city i could have had an outing on friday then i still got my saturday i can link up with my family get my daughter we go to dave and buster do some shopping that's actually what we did um got her a new iphone went to verizon just got some stuff and then we chilled the rest of the day, ordered some food, watched the movie, stayed up late. Ain't even had to worry about waking up at the crack of dawn to get to work. Then I still got my whole Sunday. Uh, well, not my whole Sunday. I got my whole Sunday morning. Just chill, regroup, get my mom ready, drop my daughter off, see a few more people, see my mom, bust it up, chop it up. And I could leave and go back to work. So to me, I feel like that's a beautiful schedule. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't go into detail. Like, they be getting real fancy with the uh, payment videos, and they be scrolling up pretty much explaining it. But y'all can see the numbers right there. I know that's all y'all really want to see is the numbers. Um, so whereas Prime, I was making pretty much the same. Not Well, no. So I was making the same on average, right? Especially toward the end of my lease. I was making the same on average. 18, 19, 21, 22. So I was still in that range. It's not too far off. Was I making more at Prime? Yes, I was making more at Prime. But I also had a couple checks where I didn't make as much at Prime. You know, I made like $1,200, $1,300. So I feel like the comparison would be this is consistent, right? So remember I told y'all about those guaranteed minimums. So that top number you see, that $1,700, that's every week. As long as I come here, do what I got to do, don't call out, that's my guaranteed pay. So I don't care if the truck break down, anything happen on their end, I still get my guaranteed pay as long as I show up for work. Um, I feel like that's a beautiful setup along with benefits, along with paid time off, along with having my weekends off. Like, I feel like that's a positive, I feel like that's a good setup, especially for being under one year. Um, whereas if you look at it through Prime Network, I do have the opportunity or I did rather have opportunity to make way more, um, 2,500 a week, um, 3,500 a week. Um, uh, I think I made 5,000. I can't remember. I said my uh, video, I think I made 5,000 in one week that, uh, that one week at Prime. So stuff like that, that's where prom comes in handy. But also, I was staying out two months, two months, two and a half months at a time too. So making all that money, never seeing nobody, not building relationships, not maintaining relationships. It's, it's, it's a different process. And like I said, if you want a mission, that's good. I'm not, I'm not talking down on that now that I'm out here doing this. That's a good process. That's a necessary step in getting your CDL. You got to get that OTR you know, you got to get that OTR experience out the way. I feel like that helps in more than one way, not just learning how to drive a truck, but it gets you used to just driving long hours, gets you used to backing. You kind of appreciate um, the type of work I do now, like being on the road two and a half months. Um, it's just, you appreciate getting home the way you do a lot more. You know what I mean? You appreciate going to the same stops every day a little more. Certain things you appreciate, whereas if you go straight local, you know, you might not appreciate it as much because you never experienced what OTR was like, if that makes any sense. Some of y'all might get that, some of y'all might not. But, um, yeah, man, that's just how I'm living. I'm definitely excited about the job, like I said. Um, I'm gonna do a full video probably in the future. Probably my next video, I'm gonna really break down regional versus OTR, some of the pros and some of the cons. Cause, you know, it's a lot of similarities, but it's a lot, it's, it's a lot of differences. One difference I like, I can say, is it feels totally different when I'm pulling up in these truck stops and I'm parking because I'm looking at these other truck drivers and I'm like, damn, yeah, y'all about to be here. Probably out here for another week, two weeks, three weeks out here. I'm just parking for the night. I'm going right back to the crib. So to me, I love being home. And you just because you drive trucks, you don't got to be over the road if you're a trucker. 
and you don't got to be over the road to make money as a trucker, as you see. So me, I just love the fact that I come home every day, I can have a life, and I can still get my money. I got my benefits. I can start building. So um, I'm going to work my way down the road again. I'm going to tap in, and yeah. All right, y'all. So tapping in, tapping in. Um, so if y'all wondering why I got this weird angle, it's because pretty much I don't get a lot of light in this truck. So, you know, I got to kind of manipulate the light a little bit, try to get a, I mean, a de decent quality out of the video. But, um, yeah, my night is winding down. It's come to a close. I made it back to the terminal. Um, so I am about 15 minutes from the crib, but I'm going to be totally honest. I'm drained. And it's, it's like, what, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, so I could technically go home, sleep in my bed, you know, ain't got to come back to like 2.30. But I said, yo, I'm tired. I'm going to save some gas. I'm going to just sleep in the truck, bro. Like, I ain't got nothing to do. It's Wednesday. So I'm going to just sleep in the truck tonight. Uh, Yeah, so that's less travel I got to do. I can sleep a little later. You know, whatever. It is what it is. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to tap in with y'all before I cut the video short. I ain't want to just leave y'all hanging. But, um, yeah, bro. I guess the point of this video was to just let y'all know, like, yeah, it's money to be made out here, bro. Whether you OTR and it get greater later. So, that first year or them first couple months rather um, when you're trying to get experience yeah i will recommend you go over the road um just to get your experience i mean get the feel for it uh and travel because it's a lot of fun times you can have over the road especially the way i do it um well did it rather um you can have a lot of fun over the road and like i said you'll appreciate your journey way more um you know when you are regional local opposed to being over the road because you know you working pretty much around the clock. You all, I consider OTR, you working 24 seven. If you in that truck, you're not home, you working. So you go from like working 24 hours, 24 seven to you coming home. So now you local regional. So if, if you do get a long day, like a 12 hour, 10, 12 hour day or 14 hour day, you'll appreciate it. Cause at the end of the day, you know, all right, well, after this long day is over, you still going home and then you still got your weekend. So, I mean, definitely do that. Um, it's one thing I wanted to let y'all know about that pay video. Oh, so when I say the guaranteed minimum, that 1700, um, so that was, I, that's obviously not the guaranteed minimum. They got, they're not going to guarantee me 1700 a week. Um, but that is, you know, it's just the minimum guaranteed minimum. So if you make more then obviously they'll pay you what you made, but I guess a guaranteed minimum is like a safe net just in case, like I said, the truck do break down, you run into inclement weather, it's a snowstorm and you really stuck you can't run your route or whatever the case may be that's when they uh you know guarantee minimum kick in and the guarantee minimum is not too far off for what i mean honestly i'm gonna just let y'all know the guarantee minimum is 1600 i was like 1650 or something like that so i made probably a thousand bucks more than the guarantee minimum so you mean i feel like that's a good safe net to cover you just in case anything happens because you never know it's still a truck and trucks break down um you know a lot of things happen so as long as it's not your fault you ain't calling out or you driving reckless so you got pulled or as long as it's not your fault you mean that guaranteed minimum is there for you as a safety net so and um another thing i know i'm probably get this question in the comments i'm a w-2 worker so that's all after taxes taxes was already taken out i'm not no longer leasing a truck anything like that worry about my own taxes so all the numbers y'all seen was definitely after taxes so yeah man um I just try to keep y'all motivated, bro. As I'm going through my journey, I just try to keep y'all motivated, let y'all know it's definitely money out here, whether you OCR. And if you are OCR, you kind of getting burnt out and you looking for other options, just know when you come home, it's definitely jobs waiting for you. So hopefully that motivated y'all. Um, shout out to everybody that's still trucking OTR, get that money. Shout out to all my local drivers, all my regional drivers getting that money. You mean, let's run this bag up. I'm about to go to sleep though. So I'm gonna tap in with y'all in the next video.